Again, God, we approach your throne room in glory. <laughs> Being mindful during this season that you actually sent glory to the earth. Mm. Trusted glory in the womb of a woman. My God. Woo. Thank you, God, for your presence. Thank you, God, for Emmanuel. You are with us, Lord God. God Almighty. So there's nothing impossible with you. Father, one more time, we are about to go into your word. You've talked with me. You've kept me going, God. You've given me insight, and for that I'm grateful. Now, Holy Spirit, I ask for your help. Except you lead and guide at this place and at this time, what I have been given may not be planted, may not be seeded right. So God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be found acceptable in your sight. You're my strength and redeemer. God, you be glorified. My God, we thank you. Bless the people that as they walk out of here, they will be with added insight as to what your word is saying and insight so that they absolutely walk in it to do thy will. This we pray in no other name but the name of Jesus. And everyone says, amen. Luke chapter 2, verse 32, it reads here, beginneth the reading of God's holy word. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. The word of the Lord for the people of God. You can take your seats. Thank you. And so... Our second last sermon for the year, we got one on watch night. We had the year theme, Kingdom Watchers. The series, Christmas series, or Christmas season 2020. The sermon topic today is the people at Christmas. The people at Christmas, I begin. Church, we have looked at the government at Christmas and the shepherds at Christmas. In other words, we've looked at the highest level according to mankind and the lowest level according to mankind. Yet I must remind you that with God, all things are possible and that with God, you cannot figure out his ways and the human mind and intellect cannot figure it out no matter how hard you try. You see, thus we lift up, God will set down. And thus we set down, God takes delight in lifting them up. Today we want to take a look at the people at Christmas. Yes. Why are there certain people mentioned during the first, the very first Christmas? Why are they mentioned and who do they represent? Church, I have long understood that God sets up in his word patterns and types so that things of the kingdom ought not overtake us by surprise. No, because as we read in God's holy word, what we read about then is what needs to be read for today. Because it is for today. One of my favorite scripture verses. Not my favorite, one of them. Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. When we examine the scriptures, we have hope. Note, I did not say read the scriptures. For reading can be done with little understanding. Note that I did not say when you hear the scriptures, because he that hath an ear does not always hear what the scripture is saying. It is when you examine, take a closer look, zoom in, check out every aspect of the scriptures, that it will leave you no choice but to have hope for the future. See? A uh, church, I put it to you today uh, that as we examine the types of people at the initial Christmas, 
we will see examples of the very same types of people we have today. <laughs> oh. So let's go now. Let's go in and investigate the topic as we look at the following three points. Point number one, reverence, old man. Reverence, old man. Point two, revealed, old mindset. Revealed, old mindset. Point three, redemption. redemption. Mm -hmm. Out with the old, in with the new. Redemption. Out with the old, in with the new. All right, let's do this. Point number one, reverence. Old man. Hmm. Let me make a statement here. God, God did not let that old man die until he fulfilled all the hope that was in that old man. Yeesh. Ow. About to have some fun. Now, 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 let me work my way to explaining that statement. As I begin looking at verses 21 through 24, the word 21. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written, in the law of the Lord. Every male, uh huh, that seemed timely. <laughs> hey, um, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves or two pigeons. Church, I put it to you. Uh, that the preceding verses are a picture of what the historical reality of the state of the Jewish people was, and it is a current reality of our state. These verses tell me a few things. A couple of, you know, a few. They tell me, one, the salvation message of the angels to the shepherds was going to be done in decency and in order. See, see, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not come breaking the law because he was the new thing. No, no, Jesus came in obedience to the law so that he might fulfill it and begin something new. Don't tell me you're starting something new and you haven't finished what you were supposed to be doing before. That's like two timing. I nobody. I, I, I mean, talk to myself. I never believed in. I, I am not an advocate of two timing. That, that you ain't you ain't happy with this one. So you you while you still got her, you're gonna check out somebody else. Mm -mm, mm -mm. The devil is a liar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No no no. Complete that relationship. Finish it up. Tidy it up. Do it properly. No. Hey, you, 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 you feel me on that sir? Yes sir. Yes sir. That's the way you do it. See why I told you it's for today, y'all, it's for today. Mm -hmm. Two, the law, this is what it tells the law was missing something, and this left the people missing something. They were not in an intimate relationship with God. Uh, they were really in some sort of connective relationship with temple priests for a price. Yeah. Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord. Hey. Pigeons and doves, you better come, come and pay something. And, and there was a prescription. Well, if you, had, if you got if this much money, if you're making this much money, don't, nah, listen here. If you are, say you are like Bartholomew, you know, Matthias, I think one of those guys, a, a tax person, you're making money. Don't be bringing me no turtle. <laughs> Up the ante. Gee, I'm trying to help somebody. Ow. Three. Woo. Under the law, the male was considered holy, not the woman. <laughs> people want to be under law. That's why people under the law don't, don't like when they see female pastors. They ain't got a lot of female pastors. 
Because cause under the law, you ain't supposed to have a female pastor. Yee-wee! Shoo! Try not to go there, because I've got 3,000 words in, in less than an hour to talk them. Ow! The male was holy. Not the females. You, you shut up, be quiet, stay under, stay under the under. Strange, isn't it? All that under the law, but today, the, okay, I'm going to leave it on there because I think people can figure it out. Figure it out. Okay. Church, I am profoundly convinced that if the law was complete or completed, and if the law could complete the people, then there would have been no need for a savior to save the people in a new way. Right. Come on, somebody. No, no, no. Thank you, Deaconess. Now, now let's look at Simeon and understand the people that he represents back then and today. 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. Oh, Lord. You, you, you notice how, like, God puts the back door and the Holy Ghost was upon him. Yeah? See, waiting, <laughs> catch this, catch this. Waiting is different when you got the Holy Ghost. If you wait like everybody else waits, you're going to be disappointed like everybody else. See, see, the Holy Ghost is able to do this. Let me tell you what is able, he's able to do. That while you are in a failure moment, because you're waiting with him, he is within you, he never stops at the failure. He says, I got success for you down the road. You see, you see, it, it's a different. So you ask me, you might say, well, pastor, how can you preach when this and that is going on? Can I tell you that the Holy Ghost is with me? Pastor, this is happening, and you're still, and you, uh, it's different than the Holy, hmm, Holy Ghost will cause you to live long. Okay, don't go ahead, don't go ahead, yeah, okay. This man, this old man, I said, oh, this old man, <laughs> this is a miss an insult, was on a waiting list. Huh? Well, he should have been on the emergency list, isn't it? He's on a waiting list. God was not, go oh, Lord have mercy, I'm, I, I'm getting too happy because I see the words to come. God was not going to call him home until he saw what he had been waiting for. Come on, somebody. Ain't no, no, no more, no more his friends are wrong. Buried all his friends. You know, maybe a couple more are still wrong, but the vast majority are gone. All right, all right. As I thought on this, I thought how God had designed, see that? Designed Simeon to wait. Mm. You, you know, there are some people who know how to wait right. There are those who will not accept what they see as being it. No, they will wait for it. Uh, they will wait to see that which is different than what they have been seeing all this time. Get that now. Uh, this man, Simeon, was not consoled by the current state of the religious system of temple worship. <laughs> he had lived years beyond many. So he had seen it all, and yet he knew that there was more to come. Come on, somebody. Simeon was not satisfied with what his current experience was, and that placed him in an ideal place to know what was to come, for he knew what was, was not it. <laughs> he, 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 he knew the current status. He knew it a long time. He, he knew the exact feel of it. So that means, look, look, it's like this. Okay, example, semen. My Spanish rice. You know I'm a professional chef. I'll just choose one thing, one. I can choose many. My Spanish rice. My Spanish, look at the elder, see that small right there? <laughs> my Spanish rice, look I said mine, you know, it's got a certain taste. And if you know the taste of semen Spanish rice, if you taste anything else, you're like, I know semen didn't taste, I know semen didn't cook this. You, you know some people like, certain, they got their stamp on a certain, 
So if, you if, you, if they hand it to you and you taste it, you're like, you made this? <laughs> you're suspicious. That, that, that's what I'm talking about with Simeon. He knew the current status. He had tasted of it for so long, yet the taste never left him satisfied. He knew that there was something else to come. And he would know, he would know when the shift would take in place. There are Simeons today. Oh, yes. Uh, the Simeon type for today is not impressed with religious systems. Come on now. You know the pomp and circumstance, the outward show of superiority. It doesn't impress you. You are waiting for God to do something different, and you are not saddled for what you are experiencing right now. Come on now. I, I think I am a forever Simeon type. For I always believe that things can get better. Things ought to be better. I am expecting God to show up in a different way than before. I don't want the same old. I want surprises. I want new inspired songs. I, I want to know that I was shocked when I, <laughs> when I was in the service. And I want to go home. Mm, see, la, think on that. Mm -hmm. Panda, don't mess with my panda now. <laughs> I, I, I'm believing to see it with my own eyes. And in the meantime, I will not slacken the reins of my worship. Come on now. Until I see what I believe to see, I will continue to worship God in spirit and in truth. I ain't going to slacken. I ain't going to stop. As a matter of fact, in faith and believing of what is to come, I, until I see what I want to see, I'm going to worship more. I'm going to praise more. I'm going to thank God more. I'm going to Glorify God more. You can't stop my prayers while I'm waiting for what is to come. You know, some people going straight. Oh, this ain't getting. Mm -hmm. oh, no, 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 no. I'm a girl. I'm a faith girl. Therefore, I'm going to praise God all the more while I wait. I'm going to lift up my voice in praise while I wait. I'm going to give God the glory while I wait. I'm going to sing and shout and dance while I wait. I'm going to do what I can do while I wait. I'm going to give my best song while I wait. I'm going to give my best dance while I wait. I'm going to give my best testimony while I wait. Because I'm waiting differently. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, until I see what I believe to see, I will continue to worship God in spirit and in truth. And his name is Simeon. Simeon. Meaning hearkening. Oh, hearkening. Don't miss the I-N-G, please. Hearkening. Hearkening is more than hearing. Mm -hmm. It is an intense hearing uh, that brings about change. You see, see that? Mm -hmm. Come on, Tyra, you got the children. They all hear you. Time to gain your bubble. They all hear you. <laughs> but the hearkening is that they do more than hear you. They all get the little bodies into the circle, into the bubble. Right? So, so we must understand, am I hearing? Am I hearing or am I hearkening? Okay, all right, all right. You, different. You can hear, listen, you can hear and even understand me. This, I love this. I've been hearing this. I've actually been hearing this for like a month and a half. You can hear me and even understand me. Yet I have a few who hearken to what I say by God's word. You are different. Let, let me help you. Let me give you some advice. Some people say, well, I don't see that in God's word where I'm going to do that. Prove it to me. That's not in God's word. God's servant said it. And it is not a sin. And it is not against God's word. But because you don't see, oh, let me help you out. I, I like being very plain. Now, it's not necessary to get new curtains. It's not necessary. Oh, so I'm okay for the sermon. But when I talk about rebranding and, oh, see, see, it's not, yes, I'm trying to help some people because you're missing it. You think the spirit of God has not been ignited within me to do what I'm doing? You think Angela gave you an idea? That thing been hooking in me for years. What's wrong? Well, I'm not seeing something. 
And God sends up. Watch it. Watch it. I don't play. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Hearkening. See, see, see. A holy hush in the place. That's it. That's it. That's it. Because pa pastor didn't give an example, didn't give a shadow, didn't give a type, gave the reality. Okay? And so you hear me, you understand. Yet the question is, are you hearkening? You see, those that hearken, you're different. You hear, you understand, and then you do. <laughs> the Bible, come on, wants us to behold Simeon. Simeon, we watch him. I know his old, I said to watch him. He ain't modern, I said watch him. All the current workers in the temple, yet I want you to behold Simeon. Simeon, so oh, he ain't even coming into the temple every day no more. He ain't coming every week. It's old. Whew. Help you out. All the younger, more updated priests. Yet I want you to behold Simeon. Uh, to old fashioned. Oh, you still sing hymns? I said, behold Simeon. Hey, hey. We cannot be so quick to use the younger without realizing that they must stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before them. Come on. Oh, come on. You got that, Jordan? I thought that you got that. Huh? That, that, that where you are is not merely because of your awesome talent. I mean, I look at you play that thing. I go, what kind of, what kind of human being passed the drums like that? You know, I'm, try, I'm, pra, I'm trying to practice for no talent night because I see how you're doing it. You stop these symbols. And I'm saying, this is a holy mess right here. Well, what I'm saying, though, is that the drums are in the church because there was somebody before and somebody before and somebody before. And now that's your responsibility is that... Watch this now, Jordan. You got to make sure that your shoulders are broad enough to create a next level for those coming behind you because we all build. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. The Bible, oh, well, Simeon, described him as just and devout. Two good words which help us to understand him, a double-barreled compliment. Uh, might I say here that this man was about to experience the double. Uh, that is, Simeon, for his devout and just ways, was about to experience the transferring of the old covenant to the new covenant. Lord have mercy. Both of them. <laughs> he was about to finally be consoled. Come on now. Even those operating under the law now want to talk about the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost. They got to be consoled. The Lord never consoled anybody. Lord never comforted anybody. Only Jesus the comforter who made his appearance under the Lord to bring us to grace. I'm going to help somebody. God sensitized Simeon to be <laughs> uncomfortable about what was going on. So that he would know when he experienced the new. Because it would be different than what was. 26. And it was revealed unto him by the, look at this, Holy Ghost. See that? It was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death <laughs> before he had seen the Lord's Christ. I smiled when I read this. For I wondered how many times death had seen him. Yeah. <laughs> but he did not see death. Come on, <laughs> like that uh, <woo. laughs> how many times some thought he was in transition yet God would not permit the light of his life to be extinguished until he bore witness of the salvation and consolation of Israel 27 and he came look at this again what and he came by the spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, comma, <laughs> only a spirit-led man of God would hear the spirit of God and be led by the spirit of God. Okay, what you trying to say here, Seaman? Because the current temple priests are all busy doing what the law told them to do. And the law never told him, get ready, Jesus is coming. 
The revelation of who Jesus is can only come by the Spirit. Isn't that what happened with John on the Isle of Patmos? And I was in what? The presence of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord on that day, da 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 Huh? In other words, it, it, the Spirit of the Lord introduces you to that which you have never seen before. So while all the temple priests were doing their job according to the law, this man was being introduced by the Spirit that there is something else that you need to experience before you get out of here. Now, church, understand, Simeon did not go to church every day, to the temple every day. He was old. He was no longer full of energy and strength. He was full of days. You hear me? Full of days. Yet he would not completely fill up or finally fill up his days until this day. <laughs> Led by God's spirit. This tells me that on this day, something, well, the Holy Spirit, he prompted his old I love it. And worn out body to be invigorated or stimulated to make a move. Come on now, you know that's what the Holy Ghost does. Okay, example, just a couple of examples. Come on now. Remember Sarah, Sarai, had to stimulate her old body, get her going, didn't he? Huh? Then let's bring it up to Mary. Something tells me, now, this is not, I don't see this rare, but by hearing this, this is what I'm hearing now. She had to be stimulated. How much ovulation has she been doing? Could it be, now this is a deep thought, this is a deep thought. Could it be that she had, ooh -wee. now this is a true virgin that you never heard of this. Could it be that she, she had not even ovulated yet? I don't know, I don't know. Could it be that this is the virgin birth where the first ovulation was that which was captured by, I'm just talking now because stuff coming to me, this stuff is deep. Point being is, is that the Holy Spirit when he is upon you, you get invigorated. That's why anybody not praising and worshiping God with what we have, you got an issue. Big time issue. Big. I, no wonder David danced out of his clothes, all in his royalty. Sometimes I feel like just getting, ah, Superman. Just like, you know, like Wonder Woman, something. It, it, it. <clears throat> How could you not? Let's say that. So the Holy Spirit invigorates him. Ah, this is the day, Simeon. Okay, now look at the time. <laughs> Listen, this was the eighth day of the life of baby Jesus. <laughs> there would only be one eighth day. There would only be one eighth day, eighth day for Jesus. Because the next day was going to be nine. So, so the Holy Ghost stimulates, invigorates, energizes Simeon on day eight. What? And if he was in his pajamas, I don't know. I don't know what he was doing, but he had to move when the Holy Spirit told him. There would only be one eight day for the Savior to be presented in the temple for circumcision. This is a cutting day. Did somebody, this is the cutting day. <laughs> On this day, instead of the baby being declared a Jewish male under the law, the old man, the man of greater reverence, declared that he, baby Jesus, was more than a Jew. <laughs> more than a Jew. More than a Jew. He was salvation. That's what Simeon says. He's salvation. Never said that to a baby before. He had lived all these years to say this. Now Simeon reveals something here that is amazing. A Jewish man declares that salvation is not for the Jews only, but that God's salvation was for the Jew and the Gentile. What? What? Now, the beautiful, what I like about this is that usually you get old people set in the ways, right? You can never convince them. You can. You, this church, blessed church, millionaires, all of you are millionaires. How about that? And some people saying, it ain't God going. You, you, can't, you can't convince people. <laughs> Listen, in the temple where Gentiles could not worship, this revered man, 
who has seen it all, declares that salvation will be for all. Right here, Gentiles, you and I, were prophetically spoken of in the temple by one who knew what it was or what was the current state of the place and currently in place, and that it was not the fulfillment of God's purpose for people everywhere. He knew that what was currently in place was not it. 32, a light <laughs> to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of the people of Israel. Important. This is not in my notes, but I just got it. I, I'll deal with the first part, second part right here, and the glory of the people of Israel. What they were supposed to understand is the former glory, your Jerusalem is not it. Come on, your prophets and your priests have not been it. This baby is your glory. See, and that's the reason so many today have a problem because to accept Jesus is to, they feel, ignore or cancel out. You can't cancel out the law. It was there. But there is something that is progress now. Hmm. Anyway, Gentiles, that's us. You're in. Gentiles, you are just as important as any other people. This baby was born for the whole world. The birth of Jesus speaks against racism among humanity. Come on. Speaks against racism. <laughs> the light of the world, Jesus Christ, is the light for everyone, Jew and Greek. Point two, revealed old mindset, verse 34. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Old mindsets are pretty difficult to shift. I can recall when I was in my late 20s or early 30s and I was to do, I did a midway teaching on a Tuesday night at, at my church. Of course, being the tacky I was, I didn't just start, I had a PowerPoint lesson. I don't know if Aldo remembers. And I was going to use the church projector. No, he didn't. <laughs> I can still feel the excitement I had to present this lesson. I mean, I had it all hooked up. Well, I got church, and to set up. And I was told I was not the pastor. And therefore, I was not going to use the projector. Holy. I was shocked and disappointed. Now, I did manage the teaching without the projector and without a PowerPoint. Yet it left me wondering and pondering. Wondering first. Wondering and pondering. Like, read what you're going to see next, pastor. Here we go. I realized... I was fighting an old mindset. That's what I'm talking about. I thought about it. No sense grumbling and getting miserable. I decided to do something. I simply had a special off-site workshop with permission of my pastor. And from there, I raised funds, and I brought my first LCD projector. <laughs> I was, I'm still happy. I'm still got it home. I won't depart from it. They got them smaller, right? But that first one, memory. Mm. And from that day, whenever I had to teach, wherever it was, I mean, I'd taken it down Richard Allen, up the country. I, I took my LCD projector and got the job done. You see, I knew I was working with an old mindset. Oh, mindsets, and that they are very difficult to change. By the way, hear me. That is why one of my rules as a pastor is that whoever is teaching or preaching, they are able to use anything that I use. Do you just think I say things, and mm -mm, they come from experiences. I know what it is to be rejected and held back, and so I don't do that with anybody in here. I go the extra mile. Okay, all right. Uh, so I, I will not do that which was done to me. Mind says, stiffened upper lip thinking. 
a refusal to budge, an inability to be pliable in situation. It's an old mindset. This is what Jesus came to destroy. Note that as Simeon speaks, note that he speaks to Mary. They help you. Hey, <laughs> makes sense. Because what he was speaking about, Joseph would not be alive to experience it. So the same Holy Spirit that was unctioning Simeon to speak would be the same Holy Spirit that would have to comfort Mary in 33 years. Note in verse 34, the late part of it, it says, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Right there, Mary was being told to prepare for that day. That day when her precious baby, God's beloved son, would experience intense opposition and many would speak against him. My, oh my. Right at this moment, baby Jesus cannot speak and his mother is being told about a day when many will speak against him. What else is being revealed by Simeon? Verse 35, yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Hmm. My Lord. People will come against him, and a sword shall pierce my soul also. This is Mary. People are going to come against him, and a sword's going to pierce my soul also. This means, and this tells me, that a sword will pierce him and also me. Don't, don't, don't miss it. Also. Okay? Salvation will experience a sword. Ah, think about it now. Salvation will experience a sword. I've come to save Jesus. I am salvation, yet I'm going to experience a sword. But he has to experience a sword. So that out of his side will come forth blood and water, proving who he is. And sometimes we don't want the sword. We, we, we don't want to be cut. M many folks have left this church. They can't take the cut. You all better be able to take the cut. The cut's coming. And let me tell you something. When the cut comes, I don't care how well you play, you better be able to take the cut and then come back and play. See, I'm trying to raise men right there. That's a man thing. Man. Oh. Tarzan, right? There ain't no Jane. Ain't no cheetah. The monkey. It's Tarzan. Oh. You know, women go and get caught, look at wine, look at uh, complain, look at have a talk session. Man, get the cut, come back and on and do what God has called you to do. That's how you know you're a man. <laughs> See, man, Merry Christmas. Yes. <laughs> Salvation will experience a sword. There is no way that you can be born to defeat a corrupt system and all goes well. Come on. You coming against a system that's been in place since Abraham, and you think it's going to be easy? Yet understand this, church. Understand this, Mary. There is a reason that many will speak against him, and a sword will pierce you both. The reason, watch this, this is, that many hearts will be revealed. Scripture. <laughs> you see, it is when you are going through divinely that God will expose those who said that they are for you, but they really were against you and are against you. See, you see, not everybody can handle that. See, 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 not everybody can handle that. You're the, you're more, you, know, you know the rehearsal, how we do it. You're the best pastor. You're the voice of the land. Check you later. <laughs> I got to be able to take the cut. You ain't got to be able to take the cut. I got to take it. Because salvation comes with a sword. You can't be a change agent, can't be a voice for our times and be doing what everybody else is doing. Got to come with something different, something that agitates and irritates, wakens up the people, huh? Really invigorating them as did the Holy Spirit by Simeon to say, come on, are you ready for the shift? Are you ready for a change? Huh? Is the paradigm shift upon you? Or you like being comfortable, like being where you are, like being old and foggy and, and boring? Let's see. Oh, come on, Simeon, that part wasn't in your notes. I know, but the Holy Spirit showed me that. That many hearts will be revealed, I said. So I want you to note this. Note. This does not stop Jesus from being Savior. 
just because of all the swords and the mouths and the words that are going to come against Jesus. Was Jesus ever not still the Savior? He was still the Savior. When he was on the cross, he was all the more the Savior. Well, isn't that a little lesson right there? Huh? Directly, if they come against you, say, what up, y'all down there, blah, 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 blah. Well, you just say, well, go ahead and crucify me, and I shall stand. Mm -hmm. And then you grab on to, and this is what God has showed us. And therefore, until I see what God has showed me, I'm not going to settle for what I see right now. Did I say a sentence right there? I said, listen, Holy Ghost told me in 2006, you're going to have some of your students become members. Huh? Students that you taught, they know, they knew seem is the same way. She ain't changed. No, no, no. We just taking it up another level because the Holy, I couldn't, couldn't, couldn't demonstrate the Holy Ghost in, in the school like I can in the church. And so the saving ability of Jesus is not dependent upon the attitude of mankind. No, he received that mission from his heavenly father, and it would be thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Remember that since he's Alpha and Omega, he's already spoken forth what's going to happen on the earth. And so he can't, can you imagine Jesus? He knows what's going to happen since, oh, I changed my mind. He couldn't change his mind once he left the portals of glory. That's why, by the way, that's why he had to be conceived of the Holy Ghost. Because when he felt like, what? In the Garden of Gethsemane? What? Oh, Lord, what? <laughs> Father, if it be possible. I need the Holy Ghost kicked in right there and said, nevertheless. You see, when you, know, when you got the Holy Ghost, you got a nevertheless attitude. Hey, I know I'm going through, but nevertheless, I know they're not going to like me. But nevertheless, I know my name's going to be mud, but Nevertheless, I go ahead, bro. Get ready, cause I'm going down that street. I know that they're gonna call me every name in the book, but nevertheless, I understand that they're not gonna appreciate the insight. But nevertheless, I know that they'll continue to condemn my name. But nevertheless, why can I say it? Because I know what's to come by the Holy Ghost, by the Holy. Holy Spirit, he wakes me up in the morning and he talks with me, he walks with me, he talks with me, he tells me that I am his own and the joy we share as I tarry there, none other has ever known. So nevertheless, are you going to give a nevertheless? When somebody wants you to give up, will you have a nevertheless? When somebody wants you to shut down, will you have a nevertheless? When somebody wants you to walk out, will you have a nevertheless? You got to have a nevertheless in your spirit. Mm. I'm telling you, your will be done. And this takes me to my final point, point number three. <laughs> Redemption, out with the old, in with the new. <laughs> Verses 36 and 37, they read, And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And, ooh, seeing stuff. And she was a widow of about four score and four years which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. This girl was, this one was deep. It's a girl, but she's like over 100. Deep. Now, I, I preached on Anna before, and we know her to be from the lineage of priests. We understand that she is at least 106 years old. Rather than getting remarried, <laughs> you know, this is just special. She was still young. She, she was in like in her early 20s when she became a widow. And you know, if she was a 20, early 20 year old girl today, she like, I come on green, but then I'm gonna get my groove on. She would've became Stella. <laughs> she got in JA, she got somewhere, get her groove on. Gonna prove that she can still catch a man. But not, not Anna. Anna says no. I've, ex Ooh, see, this thing's deep in. I've experienced man's marriage, but now I'm going to experience a marriage that'll never end. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Rather than getting remarried, she chose to be married to God, the work of God. She was faithful and she stands as another that God permitted to have long life and to have the privilege of seeing the Messiah born, the born Messiah. Anna is a type of me. Okay, okay, okay. Let me, let me say it differently. Anna is the type of woman who is devoted as any man to the work of the Lord. <laughs> Have to catch the time, yo. Anna is anointed. She's a prophetess and speaks the word of God. She is so in tune with God that God permits her to speak his heart. Now, I wonder why. Anna, her name means grace. Hmm? Oh, to have some fun. Grace. God's unmerited favor, might I call this the favor of faith. You cannot earn it. God grants it to you. God granted this woman long life and long life of devoted service to him. Let me tell you something. You cannot be this devoted to God and God not show you things that he shows nobody else. Mm -hmm. Anna, Grace, <laughs> what do you see? Anna, what do you see? Grace, what do you see? <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> Simeon saw the transition from law, and Anna saw grace. I mean, let's just think about it for a minute. This is not in my notes, so I'm just take a sip on it first. Some apple juice, apple juice, apple juice. Why is it that God did not have Anna to see the baby first? Because <laughs> you can't go from grace to the law. Did you get that? <laughs> right order. It's a transference. There's a moving. There's a fulfilling. And it has to be done in right order. All right, all right. We are not under law. We are under grace. At the blessing of baby Jesus, God speaks of moving from law to grace and that this grace is available to all. The law wasn't available to all. Grace is. God, love it, uses a woman to birth the Savior and a woman, Anna, to birth the new season of grace. <laughs> oh, Jesus. 38. <laughs> And she coming in that instant, look at that, the Holy Ghost. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise. Her and Simeon were having church. Simeon had just said his part, his Donnie back somewhere now. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I feel at rest. Thank you, Jesus. I've never probably got a can. I should have a prop can. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Ghost. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Here comes Anna. Now she's rejoicing. Likewise unto the Lord. And spake. Of he, now look at this, what she does. Let me start in the beginning. Let me start it again. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord, comma, and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Israel. She was able Hoda, to look at other people who looked like they needed something, who looked like they were looking for something, and she was able to speak to them about redemption. So she was able to speak to them, y'all. Because she had seen redemption. Yeah. She had felt redemption. Oh, wow, wow. No, no, no. I, I don't know how much more lifetime God gave her. What I do know is that once she saw Jesus, she spoke of Jesus to all she could. She spoke of him as bringing redemption. What is this redemption? Redemption coming from the Greek word litrosis, a ransoming, ransoming. Deliverance, especially from the penalty of sin. Redemption. Yee! So when they sing that song, redemption song, that's being, somebody singing prophetically, they don't even understand the singing that they need to be released from the penalty of sin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what they're singing. Uh, this again speaks to the fact, watch this, that the law could not redeem anybody. Hence, these two were looking for redemption. Who could take away the sin of the people? Not the priests. 
As a matter of fact, I was thinking about something yesterday, so I said it here because the Holy Ghost just shared it to me again. The law ain't gonna make nobody perfect. Law keep us today. They got people that are sinning, having affairs and stealing and committing adultery and, and fornication and having children out of that law. Uh -huh. Because the law can't save you. You have to go to Jesus and say, Jesus, forgive me. So I keep on trying to tell you, ain't no such thing as no, no, no law keep us. Because we sin and have to go to Jesus and say, forgive me. <laughs> you would think the law has been since, the be since way, 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 when Moses was given the law. Law been there. That it would have perfected by now, and all the people under the law would say, oh, no, the law is perfect. I ain't going to sin. Mm -mm. The law would never be perfect, and it would never stop you from sinning. It only declared that you were a sinner, and therefore bring your turtle dog, bring the bulls, the goats, and the pigeons, because that's what it's... Mm, okay. Merry Christmas. Because I have to make sure that when my musicians play other days of the week, they don't get caught up in the law. See, see, oh yeah, yeah, ears perked, eyes peeped, oh see him, yeah. Have to make sure you understand you're, you're ministering your gift. God bless you. If the Holy Ghost is upon you, you're helping them out. You're helping them out. But don't get in there when they start talking about the days of the week and the Sabbath and saying how oh, the Sabbath is just remember. Anna! Grace. The moment you say Merry Christmas, you're saying, hmm? Oh, come on now. Somebody better not play with it. I said the moment that you say Christmas, the moment that you recognize that, I've been telling you for over 10 years, that the moment that you say Jesus, you have crossed from law to grace. Yeah. Not under law, I'm under grace. Oh, no. Don't be afraid to debate people. <laughs> You know, but everybody's going to heaven. I don't care what day you were. It, 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 it's not a heaven thing. It's an earth thing. Did I say something there? Mm-hmm. And so look, who could take away the sin of the people? Not the priests. Not keeping the law. No, the law had failed from times past to the present time. Did I say present time? In 2020, I did. Only Jesus saves. Only Jesus saves. Now we have here an understanding hmm, that God uses both men and women. We understand that there are no limitations <laughs> with God with whom he will use. God will use those who are seeking him and seeking to be used. Come on. Is that you today? Are you looking for God to use you in a greater way? Are you dissatisfied with where you are? Are you ready to give service to the kingdom as never before? Here we are on the final Sunday sermon of 2020. I, I pray that you have perfect eyesight and perfect insight to know what God is saying today. Are you willing? Are you a people yet waiting for the consolation? That's, that's a, that got me. They were waiting for the consolation. Folks, guess what we're waiting for? Don't be afraid of it. The consolation. They were waiting for the first advent. We're waiting for the second advent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you a people waiting for the consolation? Not of all the Jews, but the consolation of the entire world as it stands. Don't forget John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Now, now, if it was just about a certain group, it would have been, for God so loved the Jews. Okay, the moment you say Jesus, we got to go beyond the law. All right, Simon, I think they got it. But there are those of us who are like Simeon and Anna. We are looking for the second advent of Jesus. We know this cannot be it. This can't be it. What? There is more to come, and we are waiting to see our comforter, our savior, and our king, and his name is Jesus. Verse 39. And when they have performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they return to Galilee to their own city. In other words, take the message. Take the message. They went home knowing about what was to come. Simeon, Anna, Mary, and Joseph. Today, uh-huh, director, today we shall go home knowing about what is to come. 
Be sure that you are ready for that coming day. This ain't about Mary had a little lamb. This about Mary had our Savior, Lord and King, who redeemed us, paid the ransom. Oh, you're valuable. It cost the shedding of blood. He came by blood, human blood, so that he was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet yeah, without sin. You, you, you all better think about it. <laughs> I think about it often enough. Why is it that the Bible shot it down about his life from 12? Comments! <laughs> Come on, uh, Deacon, you got that, man? Because remember where we left him? The boy, the boy Jesus, I got it, he's fully human. I have a right to say this. The boy Jesus lost his mind. His parents came back and found him and said, what in Jesus' name? <laughs> they didn't say that. That Jesus? <laughs> Jesus! You know what I've been looking for you? Why, he 12 years old, retorted to them. What's wrong, you dumbest? You dopey people. Okay. Did you not know I will be about my father's business? Right there! He is outing that Joseph, you're the stepfather. Step aside, bruh. <laughs> You want to know why the Bible shot it down at 12? Because we'll be busy preaching on the human. And we would say things like that. Well, he got smart with his parents so we can. Oh, no. Don't record it. He probably had a crush on some Jerusalem girl. Lost his Jesus mind. And down the road, go, woo, woo. Meet me at the chapel. We don't even know about that. <laughs> see, see, I see the Bible. <laughs> That's it. Because we're prone, very important. As humans, we are prone, as we are, as I am, to our feelings. The most famous statement invented in the last 10 decades, well, I feel. Right there, you're shut down. You can't deny nothing. That's the end of the conversation. And so therefore, more stress is put on that which required the unction of the Holy Spirit in his life. Because right away from 12, take, take you to age 30. And he's coming out of, watch it now, out of the wilderness, full of the Holy Ghost. God, woo! Okay, watch this. He was full of himself at 12. See, you say, Pastor, how dare you say that? Watch this. He said the right thing, but I said he was full of himself. See, see, see. Somebody's going to get there. You got that? He said the right thing, but he was still full of himself. You can say the right thing, but if you're full of yourself, you say it in the wrong spirit. He said, well, I'm right. And I right. No, no, D tell me I'm right. Tell me, am I rolling my... Okay, all right, see my back off then, you know. Yeah, you're right, I'm going to be right, right in my car. <laughs> you better listen to some music. Because more important than your feelings is the feeling of the Holy Spirit. And we, humanity, in our own spirit, we don't have the wherewithal to release our lives to the full working of the Holy Spirit. I'm being added, I, I don't say it braggadociously. I, I, I say it in hopes that you will actually see it. I've I'm, I'm been different all my life. S some people that know me from my youth say, that girl just been that way. A, a Deaconess Rollins, I never got in trouble as a child, did I? I never got in trouble. I am. Because the Holy Ghost was already upon me. I already saw things differently. So, so in high school, I, I, I weren't going to let you punk me out because I knew who I was. I was going to be quiet until I didn't have to be quiet. When the Holy Spirit is upon you, there's an added insight that you have, not only in what you should do, what you should say, where you should go, but how you do everything that you do. Do you know I have no right to operate as a pastor based on what I know? 
have to seek God and get his permission if I can say it at this time. What I just told you about my LCD projector happened 20, almost 30 years ago. Yeah. There's a release time.